gradient vectors can be drawn using just the connect command. Because if you have the vectors and they have at every x comma y location, you have the u and v components of the vector, then you can build a, because everything is, a, every row is a record, you can use the connect command to draw from the x, y location to the x, y comma u, v with some scale. So you can build that in data graph, if that's the question to the, <clears throat> so the, one plug that I kind of, I mean, MS Tank is in a public beta now. And the interesting thing is, uh, and so that is for now free. And what data graph users will have is that all, that MS Tank also has a graphing facility. So if you go in here and you click on a XY graph, you can get the points underneath using very much the same kind of layout starting as you have in, in data graph. And the same mechanism there. And for MS, for data graph users or people that have a license either through the Mac App Store account on the like sort of set it up so that you can use the beta, then they the graphing option is enabled in MS Tank automatically. If you don't have that, it's going to be disabled because it depend is since it's copying data graph, I don't want to step on it too much, but it is definitely where there's a lot of like when requests for 3D graphing a 3D plotting and more complicated graphing, that is a avenue for that those requests is MS Tank because that has a bigger scope than data graph. And some things will make it back into data graph, but other things you can definitely funnel data from MS Tank into data graph using this mechanism that I'm using here can set up tables. This is just a table, really, like a data graph table inside MS Tank, and send that table over to data graphs to then be used in other gra graphics. Kind of wanted to put, put that out. So download MS Tank, register it. Well, it will be automatically registered. The vector fields yeah, in you, MS Tank, so, yeah, absolutely. If you if you have a, a a data graph license, I think you don't you don't have to register at all. Is yeah, that no? Correct? If you have a data graph license, all you have to do is to download MS Tank, and the MS Tank is sort of similar to is just HTTPS colon slash slash MS Tank MS Tank dot BMG. All you have to do is to download that. It becomes a disk image. You drag it into the applications folder and you launch it, and it picks up the license from DataGraph. So it's going to be immediately registered. David, can you yes. show the? Uh, there's a question about doing doing vector fields. There is a, an online example of a vector field that uh, of showing how you do it within DataGraph. Maybe you can. Oh. Um, there's the that's in here, online vector field this thing here yeah, that one so at least people can see what that looks like so it sort of uses the the same kind of flattened view x y vx and vy and then you have xn is an expression that is not comp shown that would be this that is the x plus and this is the vx component and what this is doing is that it norm first normalizes it and then scales that up. So the, if this wasn't normalized, the vectors would have different lengths potentially. But this is not a, this is a directional field and not technically a vector field. Right? Well, the directional field, because every vector has the same length because this has been normalized. But you do that with the x and the y end, and then the vector itself is starting at x and y and ending at this, with the end style being a back arrow. So the arrow is flat would be this and so forth. Yeah, and this one allows you to have different like, yeah, this one here, the whole mechanism work of like the line color can be based on the scalar, like the length of it. So if you take the, you can take the line color base it on say the the I think, are you are you still sharing your screen 
I hope I am. Maybe it's just me. Yeah. <laughs> this is the coloring based okay. on a column. <laughs> Right, so that is so data graph has a lot of I mean because this is a different command so this is not a we don't have a separate scalar like a vector field drawing command that needs to be fleshed out so this is a little bit of you make two columns additional and then you draw that out so that's how vector fields can be drawn in image in data graph in image tank, the purpose would be because it's intended for larger images and larger scalar like fields, that that would be slightly different. I mean, a lot of that fun functionality is coming from data tank. So image tank is really a rewrite of data tank and, and sort of more modernized and easier to use, hopefully. And a lot of things that I sort of wanted to fix, I'm fixing in image tank. And Data tank has a lot of the functions, like the scalar field is coming from there. The, the con label contours already exist in data tank. They're going to be moved into data graph, as, as Pamela was mentioning. And a lot of those features are kind of being prop moved into image tank as the use cases pop up. So image tank is kind of community driven development. This is not an open source project, but I want to you move image tank the same way as I've moved data graph with getting feedback, getting user cases, getting people to test it early, being responsive to kind of what works and doesn't work and kind of where you want to take it. And image tank kind of moves with where the community wants it to go. And, and next month we're going to have more um, we'll have some workshops specifically for Image Tank that we'll be announcing for. for yeah. Because Image Tank is relatively yeah. recent. It's, a, it's less than three, it's about three years ago since I started it. So it's not, it, it's fair. I mean, it's, and it has a more heavier duty kind of it. The use cases are more complicated. Like you allow external programs, you allow Python, you do everything threaded, it's 3D graphics, it's rendering, it's volumetric rendering. There's a lot of things that wouldn't fit into data graphs. So trying to, so don't, I don't want to make data graphs to be too unwieldy, but if you want those extra features, that's kind of image tank is gonna take the ones that are beyond what data graph wants to do or should do. So if there's any other, uh... Questions. Oh, it looks like there is, we've got one that just popped up. Um, yeah, so uh, 3D vector field, certainly it has the in, in MS tank. Those things are engine, like sort of graphic wise, it can definitely do it, right? The data tank did it, and some of the, like the, that is sort of a use case in terms of like how. Like if you're interested in that, I'm very interested in kind of figuring out where you, like the whole pipeline of where's the data coming from? Where do you do that and how do you draw it? I mean, like the, the trick in 3D is that you don't draw everything because if you draw everything, it's just a blob and you can't see anything. So it's all a matter of kind of where do you draw the vector field? How do you select that? How do you prune it so that the structure is still there, but you sit, you can see it. And I think the, the, that what we would like to do with Image Tank also is to, you know, the webinars are, it's, it's great to be able to chat with people, but to, uh, to have that be a little bit more interactive, so do that more as a meeting, so we would be able to uh, really, you know, get more active feedback from those of you who are interested and are able to, um, to, to participate in that. Yeah, there are, there's a few hundred registered sort of MS tank users, but I would definitely like to scale that up a lot more. And they, some of them are kind of not like, I mean, the, I definitely want a big community for that. Yeah, I mean, don't, don't be sort of like self-conscious about how complicated your MS case is. I mean, the, 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 the I, I won't judge type of thing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we have a couple more minutes. If anyone has any other questions about other things too, we're, you have us here, so. <laughs> All right.
Great. Well, it sounds like um, just to kind of we're getting close to wrapping up. Oh, Dave, David can show something. Well, if anyone else has any other any other questions, thank you. For, thank you all very much for attending. The, and we've got the long haulers who've stuck it stuck it out. Okay. So. <laughs> Okay, I think we're good. Yep. Um, so we will uh, be thinking about what what uh, webinars to do next. I hope everyone has a has a great um, weekend. Yeah, these are some pretty cool images. These are uh, a is it a, a it's a cell that can you I don't know if you can do the animation of this David, but that's so the, always the, the this is a little bit heavier because the the data set that comes in is about 17 gigabytes and it's 120 different frames in it and every frame needs a fair amount of calculation. So you yeah. can go between frames relatively easily because it sort of pre computes them and caches them as you're doing it, but doing the whole thing is multiple and uh, sort of terabytes of calculations so it's a little bit yes yeah, so this is a this is a much heavier duty image analysis use case um, but this is the sort of thing that image tank has the has the potential to really help with and and is is doing this now rendering this the um these this time series of images of this moving cell and because I'm still waiting for my 16 inch M1, this is a, a <laughs> i9 and it's fanning up quite a bit. But yeah, uh, there's that. <laughs> Eventually, get that. Eventually. Great. Thanks, everyone. Um, we'll go ahead and sign off. And until next time. <laughs>